The bottom line is, had we had those investments early on uh, to carry this all the way through clinical trials years ago, we could have had a vaccine ready to go. We also took on a decade ago uh, the interesting problem of making coronavirus uh, vaccines because we recognize these as enormous public health threats, and yet we have not seen the big pharma guys and the biotechs rushing in, into this space. We wound up uh, actually uh, making and manufacturing in collaboration with Walter Reed Army Institute of Research a first-generation SARS vaccine. So SARS was the one that emerged in 2003. Um, uh, and then this new one, of course, we call the SARS-2 coronavirus. We had it manufactured, but then we could never get the investment to take it beyond that. So that was really unfortunate because we had the vaccine ready to go, but we couldn't move it into the clinic because of, of lack of funding, because by then nobody was interested in coronavirus vaccines. When the Chinese started putting up the data on BioArchive in, in January, February, we saw very close homology between the two and realized that we may be sitting on a very attractive coronavirus vaccines. Now we're working with, again, with NIH and we'll work with BARDA and others to get the funding, but now we'll have that lag. And these clinical uh, trials are not going to go quickly because of that immune enhancement. It's going to take time. The bottom line is, had we had those investments early on uh, to carry this all the way through clinical trials years ago, we could have had a vaccine ready to go. So we've got to figure out what the ecosystem is going to be to develop vaccines that are not going to make money. Uh, the big pharma companies are still not going in. Some of the biotechs are starting to because they're trying to really accelerate their technology and use it and hopefully to flip it around for something else that will make money. We need a new system in place. You mentioned um, your work developing a vaccine for SARS, and you asked the question, what will the ecosystem be for vaccines that don't make money? We were very blessed to have the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases headed by Dr. Fauci, who's been very committed to this problem. And, you know, if it wasn't for NIAID uh, and NIH, I wouldn't be even be here, right? They, they've, they've, you know, really worked hard around trying to fix this problem. The, the, the issue is it's, it's not enough. If you talk to Tony, if you talk to Dr. Fauci, he'll say, look, Peter, I'm not a venture capitalist. I can't just hand over money. It's got to go through study sections. And the, and the issue is the study sections um, some, oftentimes will get dinged uh, and get turned down from an NIH grant because what we're, they'll claim what we're doing is not innovative. And, and they're often right. It's not innovative. We're trying to make a recombinant protein vaccine. It's boring, but it's absolutely essential. And the vaccine candidate that was given the first injections for the first person took place today. You might recall when we first started, I said it would be two to three months, and if we did that, that would be the fastest we've ever gone from obtaining the sequence to being able to do a phase one trial. This has been now 65 days, which I believe is the record. And the individuals will be followed for one year, both for safety and whether it induces the kind of response that we predict would be protective.